All right, let's talk about motor skills and motor development in the first two years. Now, motor skills have to do with controlled, voluntary movement. Now, we do have movements that are not controlled or voluntary. We do have involuntary movements called reflexes. And there are some reflexes that are present from birth that we actually test in a newborn to see if they are there. Uh, now, a lot of these, they work really well if you have a visual. So uh, I am going to link to uh, another video uh, where they actually show, uh, they demonstrate some of these reflexes in newborns. But just to give you a sample of some of these reflexes, um, you have a startle reflex. You still have a startle reflex. Infants have a startle reflex. Uh, sometimes I'll demonstrate this if I'm teaching in one of the classrooms that has the uh, metal cabinet doors around uh, the thing that the um, that we use for um, for projecting. And uh, you know, I'll just kind of sneak by, act like I'm looking for an eraser for the whiteboard or something, and I'll just slam that door really loud, and it makes this loud noise, and all the students are like, oh, "Why would you do that? What's wrong with you?" And I'll say. That's your startle reflex. I just demonstrated your startle, startle reflex. You didn't have to think about it. You didn't have to. You didn't have to make yourself do it. You just did it, and you never had to learn how to do that. You just kind of intuitively, innately knew how to do it. It's a good example of a reflex. Infants have this fancy reflex. It's got more to it, called the Moro startle reflex, named after a person. And with the Moro startle reflex, uh, when they get startled or when they feel like they're falling backwards, or sometimes even when they're just lying on their back uh, and they have that sensation of maybe they are falling backwards, they will get startled and they will fan out their arms and their legs and then bring them back in to the center. Um, and it, it's a nice, healthy response that you see. Um, it is also one of the many reasons that it's beneficial to swaddle a young infant, uh, young enough that they're not rolling over on their own. We'll talk about that when we talk about with motor skills soon. Uh, but uh, swaddling, when you wrap them up tight in a swaddling blanket, uh, and they make really good ones that you can get at like Target and Walmart now that have Velcro highly recommend. Um, and so uh, for swaddling, not only does it make them feel safe and secure and comfortable, it also keeps them from waking themselves up with a really sensitive moral reflex. Um, and so that's one example. We also have the palmer grasp. Now palm, is it palm? All right. The little hand, you put something in their palm. They have the iron grip of death. And uh, you can even lift a uh, newborn up by their palmer grass, get them to do it on two fingers. You can lift them. I never had the confidence to try it, but you can indeed do that. Uh, they also have the sucking reflex. Put something in their mouth, they're going to start sucking on it. That's very advantageous because when it's time for feeding, you don't have to teach them what to do. They know what to do. It helps with survival. They also they have other reflexes that help with survival. Another kind of unique one is the Babinski reflex. And this has to do with their foot. This is a hand, obviously. Pretend it's a foot. And you run your fingers along their foot and their toes will fan out. Now this is one of those things it's good to see in an infant younger than six months. After that, like if you see it in an adult after uh, an auto vehicle accident, it's actually a bad sign. They test for it in the emergency room. It's a sign of cerebrospinal damage if, uh, if, it show, if you see it in an adult. So you want the Babinski reflex to be present in a young infant, but not an adult. Uh, those are just some samplings of reflexes. Now, when we talk about motor skills and motor development, these are controlled. These are voluntary. Some learning and practice is involved, and you kind of have to want to do it. And so one thing with motor skills is that there are two types, gross motor skills and fine motor skills. Gross means big, fine means little, and very simple, simple, simple explanation. All right, so gross motor skills are large body movements. This includes things like learning to sit up, crawl around, walk around. Fine motor skills involve smaller, more delicate movements. Um, for you, as an adult, when you're texting, you're using fine motor skills. Um, tying your shoes, uh, buttoning up buttons, those are fine motor skills. Handwriting, all right, for an infant, when they learn to do this thing called the pincer grasp, they can use that to pick up finger foods and do self-feeding. That's a fine motor skill too. All right, with um, 
with motor development, there's a usual order that things go in. Uh, one thing you have is there is something, we got some fancy words coming up. You have a cephalocaudal trend and a proximal distal trend. What do those mean? All right, cephalocaudal. Cephalo means head, caudal means tail, head to tail. You tend to gain control of the head first and then goes, you know, towards the tail. And then proximal distal, you go from the center out. Proximal is close by, distal is out, center out. So you gain control of the center first and then eventually the extremities. Um, so with the sequence, uh, sometimes you will see charts where they say, you know, the child would be doing this by this many months and this by this many months. Those can be a little problematic because parents will focus too much on those numbers and they will have a panic. They'll say, it says my child should be sitting up on their own right now. My child is not. There's something wrong with my child. And sometimes it's th their child is just fine. We kind of forget that these norms, they are just based on statistical averages. There's usually a window of time where it's considered average to accomplish a particular motor milestone. Now, uh, what is the general order of things? You know, some major uh, gross motor skills. Uh, sitting unsupported comes before standing. And then we have crawling. Now, the interesting thing about crawling is that not all babies do it. Some babies skip crawling, uh, but for those who crawl, and sometimes they also do the creeping and scooting and dragging themselves along, um, and that will typically become come before uh, standing, well, not holding on to something. So you have standing when you're holding on to something, standing when you're not holding on to something. Walking well, I say walking well because just taking a few steps is different than walking, well, actually being able to walk to something. And then walking backwards, and then running, and then jumping. Those things generally will go in an order. Now, I didn't give you specific ages for that. Um, I will give you a specific age, kind of, for one of those milestones. Let's talk about walking, all right? Because parents, they really are like, when is my child gonna take their first steps? When are they gonna walk? When can I say I have a walker? And sometimes you might have those moments where they accidentally take a few steps while they're falling down. And we might not wanna, might not wanna call that walking. But when they can walk, on their own, unsupported, for at least a few steps, you can say they are walking. Well, when does that happen? When I open up to classes, they usually have some pretty good guesses. And a lot of people are familiar with, well, that, that happens around one year, right? Kind of. Yes, that would be a very good estimate of when an infant is going to be able to walk on their own around 12 months. But it is considered normal for this to happen between 10 months and 14 months. There is a range when it is normal. Folks, I can't tell you how many first birthday parties I have been to. First of all, folks, the child can't remember the first birthday party. It's for the adults. Other than that, other than that issue, the first birthday party, I've had lots of parents be like, they're not walking yet. I'm so worried. They're supposed to be walking by now. And they never want to listen to me when I say, you've got a few months before you know, before they are not in the average range. You know, they're like, oh, but, but, but so-and-so's kids are already walking. All right. One thing we have to remember about motor development. Motor development is dependent on at least three things, maybe a fourth thing too. All right. So what is it dependent on? The brain has to be ready for a particular motor milestone. The Synaptic pathways have to have formed. You have to have brain maturity for something to be possible. That's one thing that has to happen. Another thing, the body has to be, has to, uh, be capable of a particular motor milestone. So you have to have the muscular strength, which may or may not be present. And you have to have motivation. The child has to want to do it. And sometimes that can be a barrier, not because the child is stubborn. Uh, sometimes it is, but sometimes they're like, I don't need that. I get along just fine. I can fetch toys just fine by scooting around <laughs> or having, having people do uppies and picking me up. Uh, sometimes they're like, I don't need to do that. So motivation is a factor. Another fourth possible factor is experience or practice. Um, most kids are gonna get practice in some way to be able to develop their motor development, their motor skills. 
but without practice, without experience, that can be a barrier to, to, to developing particular motor skills. Um, this is one of the reasons you may be familiar with the idea that we recommend that you put babies to sleep on their backs. That has to do with prevention of sudden infant death syndrome, which is going to be covered in a different video. Um, and so they spend a lot of time on their back because they're put to sleep on their back. Well, then we realize, you know what, they're not getting enough tummy time. And tummy time involves sort of uh, using particular muscle groups and getting practice for developing certain motor skills. So now they say back to sleep tummy to play so that they can get that experience. It also means having enough space, enough safe open space where they can explore, they can work on reaching things uh, and just, you know, just practicing, doing things. Sometimes they'll create their own practice. Uh, babies who sleep in cribs. A lot of parents will get woken up in the middle of the night, the baby crying and they're like, what's wrong with my baby? And what happened is they said, hey, those bars on the crib, I could use those to pull myself to stand. And they pull themselves to standing and then they, they, I don't know if you can hear that big jet going above, but going overhead. All right, so they pull themselves to stand and then they don't know what to do next. Because <laughs> they're like, well, what do I do next? And they cry because they don't know how to get out of the position. You know, sometimes they will create their own practice opportunities. Um, so sometimes if, you know, if you are concerned that a child seems to be behind in their motor developments, well, have you been giving them the opportunity to have free play? You know, to have just put them on the ground to either sit or lie down and let them practice, let them work on it. Um, we do see that in some cultures where babies are held a lot, in some cultures that's just part of the culture is that babies are carried around in slings because they, they have to be for practical purposes. Um, and we do see that they may be delayed uh, in certain motor milestones, but they still accomplish it. They still achieve it. Um, um, all right. So with our motor milestones, let's see. Okay. And the other thing I wanted to mention, I had one child who walked at 10 months, one child who walked at 14 months. Guess what? They're both average. I always like to like to emphasize how those numbers work. Um, all right. So, all right. Making sure I said, said the important stuff that's on there. Okay, so that is what you need to know for my classes for motor development. Uh, and if you do want to see some of those reflexes in action, go ahead and look at the video I'm going to link to in the details.